What's up guys, Robin here. Welcome back to the Dance Dojo where we help you become a better social dancer. Recently, I made a video on the characteristics that I think make up a good dancer. Today, I wanna to continue that conversation and talk about the process of how to become a good dancer. Getting from where you are now to where you want to be. So grab a piece of paper and a pen, go through these exercises with me, let's go. So the key to this whole improving as a dancer thing is you have to be willing to be a human experiment. Unapologetically ready to make mistakes, explore, get weird, get uncomfortable, be really messy and just play. So the four areas you want to dive into are one, skill, your vocabulary, technique and execution. Two, your cultural and historical understanding of the dance, the steps and everything you're doing. Number three, your style and character development, your, your presence. And number four, your connection with the music and with your partners. Now, the practical approach we're gonna to take to improving is called closing the gap, getting from where you are now to where you wanna be. This is where most people fail. They don't know what they want and they don't take the time to figure it out. Here's a quick example. If I'm to ask you, if you never had to worry about work or making money ever again in your entire life, what would you do with your time? Do you have an answer for me? If you had 10 minutes today to practice, do you know what you would practice? You need answers to these questions. So now let's do an exercise. Let's take five to 10 minutes and go through this. In one column on a piece of paper, I want you to write your current state. And in another column, I want you to write your goal state, where you wanna be. And we're gonna talk about this for each of the four categories. As I ask you questions, write down your gut reactions, your first instincts, and let's see what comes from it. First up, we have skills. What skills do I need to get where I want to be? To help you figure this out, you can talk to a teacher, someone you look up to, a believable, a trusted source, and if you're one of our students, we can help you with this in our online course. Number two, culture. What don't I understand about the culture or history that might help me better understand what I'm doing? Again, you could talk to a trusted source, you could talk to pioneers of the dance, grab a book, or watch a documentary as well. A quick note on history, don't take anyone at their word. Humans are good at creating stories and poor interpretations. Collect as many data points as possible, look for common patterns, then decide who and what you think is most believable. Synthesize it and come out with your own opinion. Number three, style and character, your presence. So when a song comes on, do you feel good, confident, and strong in how you express yourself? If not, ask yourself why, why, and then why again, and keep exploring those different layers of explanation that you come up with for yourself. When I watch myself dance, am I happy with my presence and how I carry myself? What's missing? Where do I feel a lack of confidence? And keep in mind, the way you dress will affect your mood, your energy, and confidence as well how you feel, so make sure you explore that too. Number four, connection, with music and with a partner. So when I'm dancing or watching myself dance, am I connecting with the music and my partner? Are there parts of a song or types of music I'm uncomfortable with or don't know how to move to? What are they? Are there moments with a partner where I'm confused or uncomfortable? What are they? Why? So once you know where you are and where you want to be, you can work on closing that gap. If you need to think about those questions more, replay the video again and think through it because it's a really helpful exercise without knowing where you want to go and where you are right now. It's really hard to make progress and make a change. Now let's dive deeper into what closing the gap actually looks like. So as someone learning to dance, the gap between what feels good and what looks good is really big at the beginning. So <laughs> So for me, when I was learning to break, break dancing, I was an early teenager, I go down into my basement, I put on a song, I had a big mirror on the wall, and I just do whatever felt great. And I put on one of my favorite songs, and I remember I'd be doing some of these moves, they felt really cool, I was filming myself, I hit stop, I was really excited to watch it on the TV, I plugged it in, I pressed play, I watched it, and fuck, it sucked. And it's such a terrible feeling because it felt so good to you, but then when you actually saw what it looked like, it wasn't what you expected. And that's the gap. But eventually, with practice, 
what feels good will start getting closer and closer and closer to what looks good. And that's what makes an amazing dancer. They program their bodies so well that they don't have to think anymore. Whatever they do, however they express themselves, whatever feels good now looks good. So to get to this point and close the gap, there's two things that you need to think about. The first is exposing yourself to the dance enough that you can develop a taste for what you like, what you think looks good, that feel, that vibe, that energy that you enjoy. And this is really important because what you're doing is you're mentally setting your goal state, where you want to be, how you want to dance, the dancer you want to become. So once you start to understand your tastes and your values better, then you can start focusing on your movements. Each thing you do, each skill you try, do you like it? Does it feel good? Does it feel like me? Why or why not? And by doing this, by deeply exploring all your movements, you're going to start to understand what feels like you and what doesn't. And at first, don't dismiss things too quick. It's really easy to be like, oh, I'm not good at this move or I don't really like it. Um, so if you do dismiss something, definitely come back around to it so that you can explore it deeply in the future and further develop your tastes and your likes in terms of how you like to move and express yourself as an individual. So that's why it's so important to, on a daily, weekly basis, explore your movement, explore your taste, so that you can understand how, where you want to go and how to get closer to that. So there it is. Develop your taste, develop your movement, and film yourself. Filming yourself is how you see how big that gap is, where you are now, where you want to be, and what you need to do to get closer to the dance, the movement that you value, that energy, that vibe that you really like. So chip away at that. And remember, if you don't film yourself, you're not getting feedback and you're holding your progress back. So I could talk about this all day, but you get the idea, guys. Let me know if this concept has been helpful for you. I have faith. Develop your taste. Close the gap. Enjoy the process. And after watching this video, let me know what you plan to do about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas. Uh, subscribe for updates. Next week, I'm going to talk about how to develop a practice plan, set your goals, and make a simple plan to achieve it. Guys, as always, check the video description for free lessons and videos from our online course, some really cool stuff that's going to help you develop as well. Uh, and that's it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Catch you in the next one.